Hi, um, my name is Jonathan Yevin, and uh, I want to tell you about the time I I, I met a guy who was uh, walking down the beach. Special guy. Uh, this was about ten years ago. I was working for a, a safari company at Sedani, which is now a national park. It's on the Tanzanian coast, and uh, anyway, this guy. He uh, he rolled right up off the beach, and um, there's nothing, there's nothing for a hundred miles at least. Uh, where are you coming from? Introduced himself, said he came from Kenya. And I remember him. He was like very sunburned, and he he had this big backpack on, and he uh, was the first uh, adventurer, real like. Adventurer, survivalist, I'd ever met. I was 22. Um, I couldn't believe what this guy had done. He, he, had, he had lions on that beach, elephants, he had hippos, he had a shark attack the previous year. I mean, this guy, you might have thought just from talking to him for a few minutes that his, his hotel was right around the corner. That was the uh, calm and collected uh, demeanor he, he gave off. Um, he was like an older brother to me, you know, like a very heroic older brother, you know, this idea that a man could raft the longest river in the world and, 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 and claim these equatorial glaciers no one had even heard of and, and just uh, and walk the entire African coast by himself. Um, that idea, which which blessed me when I was 22 years old, it uh, it really uh, it fundamentally changed my my relationship with the world, uh, you know. So, like any little brother might try to one up his big brother, I uh, I started traveling around with with no backpack to beat Hendry at his own game, you know. <laughs> when Hendry first heard about it, he teased me. He said. Uh, where did you learn that trick? <laughs> uh, then he made it a point to say that, uh, that it was worthy, it was original, and and that he was right behind me, you know, in this fight, in fighting the good fight. You know, that Hendry could be behind me, you know, that really put a smile on my face, you know. I, mean, I knew it was ridiculous but this sort of humility uh, was a, a key part to understanding Hendry and, 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 and his bravery you know um, I would put Hendry up there not only with the greatest kayakers of all time but but the greatest explorers of all time you know uh, um, people that you only read about in books uh, I was reading about these Papar monks in Ireland who who uh, traveled and settled Iceland in the fifth century uh, on these small boats made of wicker and cowhide. And this is across one of the most treacherous stretches of ocean in the world, and they did this without knowing if anything was even there on the other side. Uh, just like Handry, these monks lived not in the pursuit of wealth or, or personal glory or to conquer uh, foreign people. These monks were from a more pure motivation. When, when, I, when I first heard about uh, what had happened in the Congo, I was, I was at a dinner party in Singapore. Actually, it was very late, and I was being antisocial, and I, I was reading the news. And, uh, first thing I did was, uh, well, <laughs> I was in shock. I, I wrote Hendry uh, a long email. Uh, um, uh, uh, shock gave way to what could euphemistically be called a, a, a realization that uh, that I'll never get that I'll never have the opportunity to, to have an adventure with Hendry uh, or even just play chess 
or even just grow old and share stories and introduce my friends, my, my family, my future family. This tragedy constitutes a, a personal crisis for me and, and I'm sure for, for many of you as well. Uh, Hendry, I'm going to miss you. I, I will always keep your spirit alive. Um, and I hope you've found a place to dwell in peace, uh, undisturbed by the temptations and the chaos of the world.